Association. We'll have to... So you got it. And we'll talk a little bit about that later, but um, make sure you're, you're following. So let's get into it. What everyone's here for. Okay, so let me try this out. Let's see. I'm trying to work weird today because I'm work, I'm using one screen, but we'll sh we should be able to make it work. Um, do this. While, while Arnold is finding that, I I did record the first uh, session. If you are oh. an AIAA member, um, you, it is on it is behind an AIAA membership paywall. But I do have the recording there, so you can um, you can contact me, put something in the chat. If you're an AIAA member, and I'll, I'll I'll get you the link. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. That's a great point. Um, okay, let's see if this works. If not, I'll just share my screen and just. Mm, I don't like that view. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, so for next time, I will use two monitors. That will make it easy for me, but that's fine. We can just share this screen. Um, actually, we can do this. Let me reshare my screen. And I love that we're using Zoom because I'm like super used to Zoom. And then I'm not super used to the other stuff. Okay, can does that screen show up for everyone nicely? Perfect. Fair enough. Okay, awesome. Um, so let's see. Oops, no. Okay, but then if I do this, well, let me do this. There we go. Okay, if I do next slide, does it show you the next slide? I don't think so, right? No, it's not. Okay, but never mind. We'll go back to sharing the complete screen. Okay, um, so th there is a recording on going into deep on this, um, like Ellen said, on the AIAA site. Um, but if you didn't join that one, we'll go through it pretty quickly, um, just to, to kind of a recap what happened last time. So last time we stopped, we talked about pretty much, hey, stop wasting your time applying online. Um, all of you have probably applied online a bunch, um, and I, I hate doing it. Everyone hates doing it. Um, just stop wasting your time applying online, and let's think of better job search strategies. Um, and then you, you'll eventually have to apply, but you're not going to apply as much. A lot of time, people just um, apply, apply, apply. We, I call it the um, spray and pray method, where you spray your resume everywhere, and then you just pray that someone's going to look at it. Um, so, yeah, so don't do that. Now, let me see if this person... Uh, so quick recap is, um, yeah, so here's some of the, like the main points, right, is first you have to find your targets. Um, and my whole thing is go land your dream job. I don't want you to have any job. I want you to land your dream job. So first of all, go find those targets. What are those 10 companies that you really want to find? Um, you want to go from the shotgun approach of just trying any job out there and go to a sniper approach where you're specifically looking for one target um, positions. Um, so yeah, so go go find those targets, go find that company you wanna work for, and this will help you also for the resume. Go find, um, go make a list, 10 companies that you really wanna work for that are in the industry you wanna work for, go find positions in those companies that you really wanna work for. Um, after that, okay, now we have a target. We have, hey, here are the companies that I wanna work for. Um, wh what are some of the companies you wanna work for? Throw, throw in the chat, what are some of the companies you wanna work for? And then I did see more people join us. So let's see, we have people from Lake Forest, from San Jose, Parma, a lot of California people, awesome. University of Puerto Rico, Maya West, awesome. Um, SpaceX, Blue Origin, Lockheed, Boeing, Lockheed, JPL, Lockheed, Raytheon, Northrop. Hey, great, AIAA, aerospace, perfect. Everyone who wants to get to aerospace field. So yeah, if you're not signed up for, AIAA, go sign up for AIAA. Um, L3, General Electrics, perfect. Okay, so you're all up in my alley. Um, I will tell you that using these techniques and doing pretty much what I tell you, I am 99% sure you will get a job in, in those companies just because either I received an offer from all those companies or my clients have received offers from every single company you all mentioned. Um, yeah, all the companies you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Look at that, yeah, 100%, everyone on the list. Um, so, okay, cool, and I wanna make this interactive, right? I don't want everybody to fall snoozing, um, so I'll be asking questions. Um, feel free later, we'll probably take a picture and go off camera and, and just start having some fun. So, okay, 
So we, we find our target. We've got those 10 companies that we really want to work at in the industry. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to go build a network. Um, and you want to build a network at those companies pretty much for a couple of reasons, but pretty much the next one, you want to get referrals. Um, but we'll talk about how to jump into referrals. Um, but you want to build a network because that way, when they're recruiting places, you will know. Um, someone said Boeing on here. So if you want to work at Boeing, just use the hashtag Team Boeing on LinkedIn. Go follow that and go follow hashtag, go follow the company. And then that's where we will we'll say, hey, we're going to be recruiting at this place. Hey, we're going to be at this conference. Hey, we're going to be doing this. Um, so if you're following those companies and you're um, connected with people that, that recruit at those companies, then you're already going to be a leg up. And then actually, since most of your aerospace, I'll share another resource with you. So remind me, I'll share that next actually. So I won't forget, but if, if in case I do forget, um, remind me to show you where I have 300 hiring managers and recruiters in the aerospace industry. Um, so yeah, so you wanna go build that network for people in the aerospace industry and those companies so you can later know um, where they're gonna be at and you can just get to know them. Um, and then the big reason also is you want referrals. Um, just by having a referral, you're already like, multiplying your chances by. So it's like you're, you're multiplying by a whole bunch. Um, the statistics, I, I should probably add this to the slides and I keep on forgetting like this exact number. But last time I, I remember I saw it, it was like 30% of the jobs get filled through referrals. 30% um, get filled through um, career fairs, like in-person career fairs or virtual career fairs, but career fairs. And there's some like college recruiting, other stuff, but it was like six to 8% get filled through like online applications. So I'm not gonna be doing my six to eight percent online application. I'm not gonna spend my time doing that. I'm gonna just spend my job going to those career fairs, going to those conferences, going to those virtual career fairs, those events, getting those referrals because that's just gonna multiply your chances by a whole bunch. Um, so yeah, and then you're gonna be like, oh, Arnold, how do I go from a network to a referral? That's that sounds really easy, but where are the actual actual steps? And if anything I share is not actionable, uh, make sure you you tackle on me later. Uh, but I'll show you some resources where we have that, and then. Um, we talked a little bit about the hidden job market. So it's like, hey, and then like out of the position, right? The other 20% of positions get filled through the hidden job market. There's like thousands and thousands of jobs that never get posted or they get posted for like one day. I um, mean, the reason is that they just say, hey, you know what? I need a systems engineer. In my case, I know a whole bunch. So instead of like going out, putting an application, I just reach out to a systems engineer I know at other companies. I tell them, hey, we're looking for a position. Do you, you want to fill that? Um, or we just go reach out to people who we know. Um, and that's the hidden job market. It's just people reached out, hey, you need this job. Um, recruiters going. So you want to make sure you know people so they can help you out with that hidden job market. Um, just the next slide on here. So, and then there's a recap, right? So of what we did last time. Um, so we're not gonna go in details, but pretty much all those details are in this article that you can look up or the video recording that Ellen has. Um, so in that video recording, I really went through all the details of this, but here's a whole bunch of the details you can look at. So find the targets, um, build a network, and here it shows you like how to build a network, right? Alumni, affiliations, AIAA is a perfect one, secondary connections. I mean, it even gives you examples on how, how to write that, that connect request, um, like gives you examples where then it goes into, hey, how to get the referrals. Um, it, I have like steps here. Here are like the seven steps to get a referral, in my opinion, right? Is like do these seven things. That way they see your face several times and they feel like they like you and they know you and they'll give you a referral. Um, and I talk a little bit about the job market. And there's even some like podcast episodes and things to look at. Okay, cool. So yeah, so that was a recap of what we did last time. Um, so today we're going to focus on resumes. Um, and I guess any quick questions on job search strategy before I, I just skip it completely. Anything that you're like, man, I really want to know a little bit about this. And we'll take like a couple of minutes to answer questions on that. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, you got the LinkedIn right now. Is that on your, on your personal page? Just LinkedIn information? About yeah. The, so, the yeah. So that's a great question. Um, if you just go to my profile, um, the first thing you'll see on here is my newsletter. Uh, and then, oh, the other thing I mentioned right here. Um, so you can go into my newsletter and just go into it. And that's pretty much all the detailed portions of what I present. Um, so you'll be able to find a LinkedIn profile. You'll be, and then obviously going to these things much better because you get all the details, um, but summaries of everything that I present here. So you can do job search. That's the one that I just talked about, like, hey, how to, how to use that strategy instead. 
Um, what we're going to talk about today, resumes, is also on here. Um, and then we have this one that I want to make sure everyone knows about. Um, and because of your question, I remembered me. Um, let's see. Uh, resource for landing your dream job plus 300 with hiring managers. So here's just a bunch of resources that I give out. It's like, hey, go sign up to this newsletter. Here's 42 episodes. Here's some past recordings. Um, and then here's a list of 300 hiring managers and recruiters. Go click on that list and literally you can look up the company. And there's like Boeing, Honeywell, Lockheed, pretty much everybody, everybody said NASA, um, Raytheon. So yeah, go look up this list and just, and there's LinkedIn, LinkedIn's there right there. And you know, and it's free, like you don't have to even put your email, you just go and grab the information. Um, I guess there's someone on there right now. Anonymous. Lee, that's what I'm talking about. Cheat sheet. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. So and like everyone here is like recruiters, hiring managers, and they all on their LinkedIn, they once upon a time said, hey, I'm hiring people. Um, and that's why we added them to this list. So go add all those people and then you'll definitely know about it. Um, and then inside that that same newsletter, you'll find that um, that article that I shared. Okay, I think that answered your question. Does anyone else have any quick questions before we jump to resumes? All right, cool. So resumes. Um, let's make this a slideshow. All right. Why is your resume important? Let's see. Why why are you even here? Like why do, why are you here? Why is your resume important? Why, why do you want to know how to have a good resume? You can land the job. Yeah. Or at least get in the interview. Yes. It's right your first step in the door. Yes. Um, so resumes get you interviews. Um, that is very true. That's kind of what they people look at for your for your interviews. Uh, let's see, we have some comments in here that I didn't answer. So do I just start connecting with people that work there to build my network? Um, yes, pretty much. Um, you find people that have those those similar backgrounds of you of like they're alumni, they're part of um, AIAA, they're part of all those things. And in that article, you'll find all the details um, or the recording that Ellen has on the AIAA side. Um, why careers on companies website never work? It, it's people think that is like, oh, if I learn how to bypass the ATS system, I'll get a job. No, in reality, people give jobs. So ATS just kind of ranks you. Um, and then if you do what I'll teach you here, um, then you get ranked high anyways. And then if you have referrals, that just puts them on top. Um, and then companies spend all these resources to go to AIAA career fairs um, to go hire people. So that's why, because there's so many better avenues of meeting people and actually seeing people um, than just the company website. Um, company websites usually like just put everything in there. Um, awesome. Okay, cool. So yeah, so big reason why we want to do our resumes is because it's, a lot of times it's the first impression. It's people's first impression if they just do the online application. Um, and then it's the, the, the document, your first document that you will share with people once you're trying to get that referral or that job. It, it, it's like, hey, I talked to someone, but like, here's the facts. Here's what I've done and like what I, what I have that meets what you want. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's pretty much why it's important because it's really, if you don't have a resume that sells, then you just stop. Um, and you might be able to to like add a career for talk really well and then get an interview. Um, but but that's like a really weird case. But usually like you're talking well, plus your resume equals interview. Um, and I guess we'll, we should talk about elevator pitches in the future. So we'll add that if we have it. Um, so, yeah. So first thing, get free reviews. Arnold, what do you mean about free reviews? Um, go to your career schools. Um, go to your school's career services office. Um, if you already graduated, it doesn't matter. Go. They, they usually don't care if you're an alumni or not. Um, you're all in engineering or aerospace industry, so you have to have some type of degree. So go to your 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 alumni, your school that you went to, or you're currently a student. Go to it. They usually have career services office, and they'll do free resume reviews. Um, go to it until they can't give you more advice. Go to free events. There's sometimes the schools do, hey, uh, employers, resume reviews. AIAA probably has some events in there that you can look at, like resume reviews. Go as many of those as you can um to get free resume reviews um let's see then a question that i get a lot of time is when is my resume done like when do i know that i finished my resume um because you don't want to just make your resume and think you're done um you want it to get reviewed um and then we we got some free reviews now we know where to get them but how do i know my resume is done um that's usually a question that i get and i will tell you that your resume is done um, when you don't get any more good in inputs and what i mean about good inputs is like someone gave you a hey, you should put it this way. 
which someone else already told you to put it a different way. So now you're starting to get either inputs that like contradict to each other or you're not really getting any inputs. That's when I know my resume is done. I'm like, when no one can give me any more feedback or the feedback they give me to someone else has given me the opposite or I don't like the feedback because I don't think it's my style. Um, that's when I know my resume is done. Uh, I will tell you that opinions are like belly buttons. Um, everyone has one. So you have to be really um, conscious about, okay, these are just opinions. Um, I need to like, who's giving me this opinion? Is it someone that, that knows about getting jobs? Someone that has hired people? Is it just some random person that's giving you their opinion? So that's one thing you need to take in consideration. Um, and then you need also, it's like, what's your opinion? Um, at the end of the day, it's your resume. So you wanna make sure it's something that you feel comfortable with. So I've had people tell me, do this instead of this, do one page versus two pages, do this or that. Um, and I usually end up just picking all the feedback that I got into like my my way. I mean, like same with my opinion. My opinion, I think it's better. I'm biased though because it's mine. <laughs> um, and I've been doing this a lot. So so mine's just opinion. If you think totally disagree with something, do it your way all, all, all um, same. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I jumped into the next topic around that opinions. Opinions are like belly buttons. So, okay. So that's just some general stuff, right? Um, some general strategy advice. And, and you can see my screen pretty well, right? Like you don't see the shag, you don't see the people in the bottom. That's just me. Uh, correct. Yes. It's good. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Because I see like extra stuff that you don't see. Okay, so general strategy advice. Sell, don't summarize. Your resume is your selling, like your sales brochure. You do not want to summarize everything you've done in your career, in your schooling, everything. You do not want to summarize. You want to sell. You don't want to say, hey, I've done, you don't want to share your responsibilities. You want to share what's the value you add. Think of everything as like, what is the value that I add? Um, because guess how long, and this is according to, I think it was like Indeed or, or LinkedIn or something. Guess how long recruiters and hiring managers look at people's resumes when you're just like in the database. Guess how long they look at your resume? Three seconds, seven seconds. Okay, I like it. I like it. 30 seconds. Okay. Okay, 30. Okay, we're getting, we're they getting. Try <laughs> they try not to. They try not to. That's true. ATS tries to take some of them out. So yes, 15. So we have a big range. Uh, but I love that everyone's saying seconds because yes, um, it, people take about six to seven seconds to look at people's resumes. So if you give me, and like, it's not 30 seconds. Sorry for all of you, it's not 30 seconds. In six to seven seconds, I look at your resume and I need to be interested. You need to catch my attention, so I look at it deeper. Um, if those 30 seconds, you in those seven seconds, you didn't catch my interest, sorry, you're the next one. Because why? Because there's 200 resumes that we have to go look at and just one person um, for every, every job position, right? So you want to make sure you're selling, you're showing the value you add and not summarizing your entire life. Um, because that's where the interview is about. The interview is about more, okay, you're going to start selling those, the value you add even more. And then, yeah, it's like a book. Your resume literally is, I'm at the library looking at the books, looking at the titles. If I re recognize them because they're, they're, they're um, someone that I've met before, um, then I usually will, if we recognize a title in the library, you'll probably grab that book and be more interested in looking at it. Um, and like this, right? So resume, just looking at the titles like that. Um, if you have a referral, usually in the list, in the resume list, they'll have a big referral or asterisk next to your name. Um, so it's like if your book was in the bestsellers list, like, okay, let me go look at this pile of books. I'm going to look at more. Um, and then literally people are like, okay, Arnold, um, so my book is there. What do, later they grab the book and they open the table of content and that's your interview. That's it. No one reads the book. <laughs> like you have to go table content. We look at your interview. That's the interview pretty much. And then after that, we, we decide we're going to go read the book or invest in it. Um, so yeah, so that all it's all to say, sell, don't summarize. I can't just put that in more. And then what you should always be thinking is, Arnold, you're giving me something that's not actionable. So I'll teach you next how we sell and don't summarize. Um, sniper instead of shotgun. Um, we kind of talked about that, but this is a, in a different scenario. This is, hey, you want your resume to be targeting that position. Um, you wanna make sure that your resume is as specific as possible to that job description. So one, you wanna show your resume is adequate for the industry. So I would have different resumes for different industries. Two, I would have a different resume, either the industry or not, um, for different positions. So like systems engineering, my example, I would have a resume for systems engineering. I would have different resume for design engineers. I would make sure I'm targeting that job description. And 
guess guess what type of things you would put in your resume to make sure you're targeting that job description. You look at the job description. Um, you go in and you go look at that job description. You go and be like, hey, let me go look through it. So what I recommend people do is go in and highlight everything where you have experience or relevant experience to, then that's what you're going to talk about at the interview. One, and then two, you need to make sure that your resume has stuff like that. So go grab six or seven systems engineering jobs at aerospace companies and go look at some of the common things they have. And, and that's the type of stuff you want to have in your resume. You want to make sure you're hitting some of those things. Um, so like when the ATS goes, it, it, it like grabs those words, right? So if I want to get into systems engineering, I should probably have some model-based systems engineering on there. I should be talking about um, requirements. I should be talking about um, risk management. Like in my case, I was interested in risk management. So you want to make sure that you're adding stuff like that from the job descriptions. Um, and then in the interviews, that's what you use pretty much to think of your examples too. Um, so, okay. And then less is best because of the seven seconds, right? Um, the whole seven seconds thing, less is best. There was something else that I wanted to say when I was talking about the seven seconds. I forgot what it was, but, but whatever. Um, so usually less is best. If you're a student, one page. Don't put it more than one page. If you're in the industry and you've been in the industry for about five years, still one page. Um, if you were in a rotation program or you have like a lot of stuff, then I would do like a page and a half. Um, or like if you're mid-career or, or, or higher, I would do a page and a half. Um, executive level or like senior career, that's when I would do two pages. Um, but I wouldn't go past two pages. But pretty much mostly people, most people on this call will have to be doing one page resumes. Um, okay, are we learning stuff so far? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. yes. Yes, I love it. Okay, we're learning stuff. I love it um so making okay. notes good good so let's see some general guidelines for your your resume in general um use a consistent format make sure you're using the same format throughout that's part of the people reviewing it um it's easier said than done but i'll show you some examples um use 0. 0.5 to 1 inch margins and I, what i mean is like the margins around the, the page um, and use space between sections. Um, so, and like when I say sections, I mean like your education section, your work experience, use space between those. So it's kind of easier to read and, and we'll, and I'll show you right an example because it's like just saying that doesn't really help people. Um, I'll show you an example. Um, a resume should be in PDF when uploading or emailing to companies, it looks more professional. Um, and then, yeah, just send a PDF, um, recommended resume file name. Make sure you put in your name, the resume, and the date. Um, add in the date. Um, you can put in the specific company, the job, whatever, but make sure you, it's, it looks like that. The resume, the file name, right? It's not just download A30BB or something like that. Just, just is good impressions. Um, don't lie on your resume. Make sure you've reviewed your resume before an interview because they might ask you something on it. If you don't remember, it's going to look like you lied. Um, I know some people are like, oh, yeah, I lied on my resume, got me an interview. Yeah, but if you get that job, they'll later um, do background checks and then they'll see like, hey, you lied on your resume. So then that's a very bad first impression. You'll probably lose the job opportunity. Um, I would say nothing smaller than 10 size font and nothing bigger than 12, except for the title, like your name on the top. Um, but try to keep your font 10 to 12. 12, the, if it's 12, that's even better. Um, my favorite is time use Roman, the, uh, the letter. Some people say that's too aggressive and you should use Arial or something, but I'm a, an aggressive person. So, <laughs> so I use Times New Roman, um, but that's just some general questions that I get usually. So that's just some general guidelines, right? Um, and then your resume sections. Arnold, how should I put my resume section? Um, I would put first your contact information at the top. After that, because you need to know who it is, right? After that, people like to do objective or summary. My piece of advice, just take it out. No one's going to read your objective summary. In seven seconds, I'm not going to read it. I don't care. That's my piece of advice. I don't, I don't care about objective summaries. I took it out from my resumes. Um, if you do really, really want to have it, make it one or two sentences. Don't add too much in it. Um, the only case I've only ever recommended once to do an objective, and the only reason was because I wanted that person had a lot of passion for the aerospace industry, and they were in medical, and they were doing stuff like private pilot, like all these aerospace-related things. Um, so I tell them, like, add that into your objective, to your summary, um, so they, they can see right up front that you love the aerospace industry. Okay, um, so that's the only time I've ever recommended, but everybody else, just take it out. Don't waste your face. Uh, don't make someone look at it for one second, because they already took out 10% of your time to look at your stuff. Um, then after that, I would put your work experience. Um, that's really the first thing they're going to look at, the work experience. So you make sure it's at the top. Your, your name, 
work experience. Um, if you just graduated or you have, I would still even put your internship sometimes up there just because that's going to be more important than your actual education. Um, if you have no relevant work experience, so internships or part time jobs that was in aerospace or in engineering or whatever, um, then I would do your education first. That's the only time I would do education for it first. Um, but if not, I would put work experience. After that, education or swap it. And then after that, you do all the extra stuff. Um, your skills um, and don't add any soft skills. Don't, don't add any soft skills. Uh, anyone, you shouldn't add anything on your resume that anyone else can add. I, I, Arnold, I'm not going to add something that Francisco and Jess Pam can add. I want to add stuff that's only specific to me. So hard worker, do not. Everyone's going to have, uh, everyone thinks they're hard workers. So do not add hard workers. You want to make sure your soft skills are shown through all your work experience and, and, and all your other experience. Um, you then you add awards, leadership roles, volunteering. I should add volunteering on here. All those things I would also add, and I'll tell you kind of what to keep for the one page. Um, but that's the stuff we want to do, and we want to do it in that in that in that way, right? So let's see. Okay. Um, so let me give you an example. And I was trying to find. Uh, I'm not sure why this didn't show up the way I wanted it to, but actually, let me just check really quick. It should be right here. Um, here we go. So I was trying to find the example of the resume I used when I was a student, um, when I got my Boeing job, because that, that resume got me a whole bunch of jobs, but I honestly, I ran out of time and didn't have time to go look for it. Um, so I'm going to show you my current resume, um, which is not, it, it, and the only reason like mine is a page and a half is because I was in a rotation program and I've had like a whole bunch of positions. Um, so this is my resume and it goes with the, the advice that I'm giving, right? is, hey, at the top, um, has my name, has my contact information, has my phone number, has my email. I even put a link to it, so it's easy for people to send me an email. I put my LinkedIn on there, um, and I didn't add, like, the whole thing. I made a custom URL. You can do that. And I was like, Arnold the Engineer, go go find me. I'm in Seattle, Washington, so I didn't add my full address. Um, in my case, sometimes people are like, hey, should I take my address off? I would take it off if you're if you want to get a job like at a different place where they don't offer relocation and you don't care about relocation, you can move yourself. Um, then that would so they don't kind of filter you out. Um, but yeah, that's kind of mine. Head and you see my format, right? Very simple. Um, you do not want to do things inside boxes or you don't want to be creative um, because usually you just want this to be easy to look at, easy to read. Um, then after that, I write a hit the work experience, and then yeah, I guess let's go in through all these detail by detail. Um, but I did have a question. Let me look at the questions. Uh, people are learning. Awesome. Hey, Arnold. So I have my resume font to be 10, but I heard from someone, I think a recruiter doing the Chef 22 conference, that the minimum they were able to allow was nine, but you would recommend to keep it at 10. The thing with nine is like, in a, in a, and we're talking about font size, right? Font size nine, like if it's on a, on uh, like a computer screen, I can zoom into it as easy, but like on paper, nine is really hard to read. <laughs> So you don't want to, and then like, especially if you're at CHEP 22, I'm assuming you're a student and you shouldn't have that much stuff on your resume as a student, right? Um, you should be able to keep everything under one page and do it a little bit font size. I think mine is 10 on here. Uh, mine is, is 12 for like work experience and like the companies and stuff that I want to highlight. And then I think it's 10 for everything else. Um, so yeah, I, I would stay at 10. It's, I guess it's fine, but it's just gonna be hard for me to some people. Um, any thoughts on pictures for resumes? Yes. Don't add it. Um, this um, that's kind of like a outside of the U.S. thing. Um, people add their pictures to their resume. Um, sometimes that's like unconscious bias. So, so don't add your 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 picture. And that's just that's not common here in the U.S. Um, so don't add it. Um, should we leave out cover letters? Some people still ask for them. If they ask for it, send them a cover letter. And I would do for cover letter. I would do seven sentences. That's it. I would literally like a cover letter. And I, I have like a whole presentation on cover letters. Um, but honestly, so few people have asked for them and so people so few people look at them that I don't even talk about it anymore that, that was one topic that I, I was like talking about still um, and like I feel like it's not valuable enough so don't spend your time doing a cover letter if they ask for it do seven sentences and I have an, I in my articles I think I have one on cover letter already so yeah so go look at my articles there's a cover letter one there um, but don't spend your time doing it if they don't ask you for it um, okay I, I love that we're asking questions and we're going back and forth um, you only have one page to pitch yourself so don't waste the space with pictures um, I agree. I agree with Simone. Don't don't waste your your your, your space. You said that you were in a rotational program. Do you yes. have any uh, Do you have any uh, 
suggestions or advice as to how to try and get on one of those type of programs? Um, we can, I'll, 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 I'll answer that later if we have time, um, but we'll All focus right. on resumes for, for this portion for like the first. If no one has any more questions, I can ask, you can ask that later. Uh, okay, so let's, let, let's go into the details here then. Um, I really appreciate everybody asking questions and being interactive just because it keeps me interested in this. Um, keeps like, us awake. Yeah, it keeps everyone awake, exactly. Um, I even had some fun props in the past. I don't know, I have a money gun. Is that fun? Yes, that's very fun. <laughs> uh, there you go. I actually had that for, okay, This is that's the problem with having too many props and fun stuff. Um, I, I used this for a salary negotiation presentation that I did like in person. Um, and then security came to my room because they said that they had a report that I had a whole bunch of money and a gun in my room. Oh uh, no. Uh, yeah. Oh no, no. <laughs> but, yeah, and I was like, I was like, who snitched on me? And apparently um, it was house cleaning. They went in, I for, totally forgot, and they saw, because I did a video to promote it, like doing like pretty much what I did do that to promote my session. Um, so all the money was on the floor and like there was like the, the gun like was kind of covered. So they thought it was like actual gun. So security was kind of freaking out. Um, so yeah, so that's my side funny story. But okay, work experience. So you really want to start with like the company you worked at, the location. Um, and if you see, I'm using the same format throughout. So like, Hey, the same thing I did here, I did for the other one. Um, I would recommend for each position you have on there to use three to four bullet points, um, minimum two, don't use use one, um, but minimum two bullet points. If it if you don't have enough value to add for that position, then take it out. Um, and I wouldn't do more than, than five, like four is good enough. Um, you don't really need to do five, um, but five is the max I would do. If you really, really have a lot to, to add, like you've been in one position for 10 years, um, then maybe I would do five, um, uh, five longer ones, but that's kind of how I would keep it. Um, okay, so let's see uh, here, right? You want you want to add in, I would do the most recent job at top and go chronological. And you want to make sure like, if you read mine, right? You go in, you, the first thing you see is like, okay, the Boeing. So if I'm an aerospace person, like great company, aerospace, okay, easy, easy sell right there already in, in my queue. Um, then it's like, okay, what has he worked on? First thing I see, deputy lead engineer, systems integration. Oh, this guy's a lead engineer? Okay, if I'm applying for a lead position, it's perfect. Um, I need to update this because I'm not a deputy anymore, now I'm an actual lead. Um, so congratulations to me. I just got promoted like two weeks ago, so I'm excited about that still. Actually like a month ago now. Um, but yeah, and then everything in the beginning, you want it to be a powerful word. Um, you want me to see the first three, four words in your bullets to make me want to read more. Um, so like here, led five engineers on supporting AD design teams. Like, that's interesting, let me keep reading. With documentation to comply to ARP, blah, 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 which includes FHAs, SSAs, and fall trees. And like, I, and add in numbers. You wanna add in numbers to your bullet points to make them more interesting. Um, and, and the reason why I added FHA, SSA, FTA, the ARP, is because every single time you go look for a job that's a systems engineering related to safety, that's what they ask for. They ask for people experiencing FHAs, fall trees, SSAs. They ask about this ARP. So I'm like, okay, I might as well just put it here. And that like makes it automatically go to the top of people's safety queue. Um, I had NASA, Blue Origin, a whole bunch of companies like that asking me, Arnold, do you want to interview? Because I had this specific wording of safety. Um, and, and so next next one, and like no one's going to read the whole thing. So like led five engineers on supporting any design teams. I'm like, oh, damn, that's cool. Um, all right. So uh, reduce team safety schedule on average five months. Okay, that's cool. He's like, he's, he's helped reduce the team schedule. Um, created fat master file to project manage 800 fault trees. Um, I have more, more cooler stuff, so I would probably take that out now. But hey, so you're seeing powerful words. I would take the created out. I would do a better word than that. Um, here, conducted three single multiple failure cases. Audited single multiple failure case. Consulted on 7 through 7 requirements deviation. So you want the first couple of words to be like a headline to make sure that people want to keep reading them. Um, because that's that's what they're gonna look at. They're gonna glance through this and they're like, okay, lady five engineers, okay, conducted this. This is what I would do. Uh, I would go in, I would look at people's title, I would look at this, like, okay, is this interesting? Um, go in here, is this interesting enough? And like everything's interesting, right? Integrated, led, developed, managed, analyzed. You want powerful words, managed risk issues, and you want those things that relate to to what you're doing. Um Okay, so yeah, so that's why I would do work experience. I would add in, uh, one thing that I need to do is I need to add in that because I get do get asked like, why were you in so many roles in such a short time? It's like, well, I was in a rotation program. So I need to make sure that this is obvious that it's a rotation program. It's not that I'm jumping around the company. Um, and then here, other company, uh, I would add in. So these are all different roles, right? I have had at the company. 
previous companies. Um, they're, they're less important than these jobs. So I, that's why I started to take out bullet points and I just kept it really high level. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, so I was a professor at community college. That's why if you, if you don't say anything, I will stay here very quietly until someone answers when I have a question. I have experience doing that as a professor. Um, and then I, I still had internships. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I have a bunch of stuff because of the rotation program, but here's what I would hope you would have in one page, right? Um, education, I would make your education a little bit better than I did. Um, here I'm just like summarizing my education, um, but I have like a master's, I have certificates. Um, I just finished ground school. So I knew I had ground school for like private pilot. Um, I would add in GPA. People tell me, Arnold, should I add my GPA? Um, if it's a high GPA, yes, keep it on there. It, like it's gonna, it doesn't take off any space. It doesn't take off anything. It just adds value. If it's under 3.0, then you can drop it off. Um, if you're it's still, like if you're in your school, it's gonna be more important. Um, as long as if it's 3.0 or higher, no one cares. I don't care. If I could go back in time, I would have done, no, my bachelor's was 3.5-ish. So I would have taken the time to get this down to 3.3 and done more stuff, extracurriculars. If I could go back in time, I do not care about your resident, their GPA as much. Um, there's only like one manager out of 20 that cares about people's GPAs. Um, then I added in skills. Wow, look at that, we hit 30 people in the room, awesome. Um, so skills, right? Uh, just hard skills. You wanna put in here only hard skills, no soft skills. So, and things that I would add is languages. Um, I'm fluent in Spanish, softwares that I know. Um, that's usually good because then like, oh, people and I like project, create, uh, what's project? I see like, even I'm finding mistakes. I should add Microsoft project. Um, Cameo, Doors, Boris, like, and this is like a Boeing specific one. So I should probably add in for non-Boeing Boeing one, Desi. Um, yeah, I should add in that. So like, I, even me, I'm finding updates that I need to do on my resume. Um, I don't need a job, so that's why I don't care that as much. Um, Ellen, do you have a question? How important are keywords? I hear a lot about the fact that the resumes are scanned by uh, the company's uh, computer system for keywords. Yeah. How much should we focus on that? Um, I would say, yes, focus on it. And what I mean by focus on it is go grab those five positions that you like, go throw them on a word cloud generator and go see what are those words that keep on popping up. Um, for my case, I was looking for lead engineer roles in safety. So words that came up was this ARP, was fault trees, was safety assessments, was FHAs, this things. Um, when I did model-based systems engineering, words that would come up would be Cameo, model-based systems engineering. Um, so you wanna make sure that's, that's somewhere in your resume, it's embedded in your resume. You don't wanna just add keywords, um, but you wanna make sure they're embedded in stuff. So like here, right? CAD, GDNT. I know a lot of companies like GDNT. I schematics. I know a lot of people are interested. Like GDNT is a keyword that I have in here on purpose. Um, risk management is one I have on purpose. SysML, Cameo, I have these on purpose. Um, so yeah, so I found those through the job descriptions. That's how you find what the keywords are. Because ATS, they're pretty much going to match you against the job description. Um, I don't think it's like the world, the most important thing because we want to get jobs through referrals and through career fairs, and that's actual people. Um, I do think it's 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 a little important to do because that's how like the online applications do, but I don't think I, I don't think you should base your resume off of it. I've seen some terrible resumes that people paid $700 to go create so it could be really ATS friendly, but it's terrible to read and they didn't never got a job and then they kind of did this easy format that I have and then they got jobs. Um, so don't it don't it's not the most important thing. It's not even like the top five important things. It's down there. Um, it's not as important. But I would make sure you look at that and you you from the job descriptions, you have those things that people want in your resume. Um, hopefully that answered your question, Ellen. But great question. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, then I would have like my case, right? I want to go into management, so I had leadership skills on here. And you should be following your format over here, but I didn't have space, so I just kind of like well, whatever. Um, but yeah, you should probably be following the same format. So it looks nicer. Um, so I had here, Hey, I was a president at this role at Boeing. I've had a lot of engagement roles. Um, some of my extracurriculars and I haven't updated this. So I need to go update this. Um, and then honors and awards. Um, so it's like the most important thing is work experience. After that, everything else is just extra, right? If they at the work experience, they thought it was interesting, then they will, then, then they will look at this stuff. If not, they will probably skip this things. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. Add numbers, show the value you add, not summary. Um, make sure your first word and everything is powerful words. So leading, um, I guess that's not powerful. No, that should be 20 now, but is it? Um, yeah, okay. Any, let's see. 
what do we want to do here? Ooh, wow, we've been, time is running by. Um, I guess I'll finish slides really quick. I'll open up for questions and then we'll, we'll have some people throw their resumes and I can do some real life um, looking through people's resumes because I think that's, that's one of my favorite parts. Um, let's see. So if you're a brave person and you want me to review your resume um, on the screen for everyone else to see, um, send it over to me. You can send it to me on LinkedIn or you can send it, I think you can send it here in the chat maybe. Yeah, let's try to do that. Whatever way you can get a resume to me, get it to me and I'll, we'll review it. Um, but okay, let's see. So extra resources, the article that I shared with you, um, here we saw that, and then post. Um, so I did this post and I kind of like it. Um, and this is my low key way of saying, go follow me without saying, go follow me. You're like, look at some of the posts that I do. Uh, so yeah, so here it was a post that I did about, cause like, I was like, okay, after reviewing three hundred plus, there you go, Andrew, first one, love it. Uh, this is the, hey, uh after reviewing 300 entry-level resumes here are my top do's and don'ts um do one page sell the value you add start every sentence with a strong action verb we said all this add leadership volunteering these things really differentiate you um everyone is going to have good skills but like hey this this is going to show I, I don't want you just to show that you're the best technical person i also want you to, to show that you are a person that i'm going to enjoy working with and i'm going to go i want to see every day because i have to see you every single day from eight to five or whatever your, your schedule is um Add competitions and projects because what you want to show the, the okay so this is a good one that I, I didn't talk about um you when you talk about experience right if you're a student you don't have work experience um but you do have experience based off of competitions and projects you want to make sure you're spending your time to do engineering if you're in engineering or whatever other if your business go do business cases um the the what you're in go do competitions and projects in that that you have to work in a team. That's the big thing, working in a team. Because in the real world, you're gonna have to work in a team and that's the stuff you can add to your resume. So I would say usually first, add in internships or work that's relevant to that job or that industry. Second, I would add in um, research that you did at school. After that, I would add in group competitions or projects as your relevant experience. Um, the, if you don't have work experience, then you're gonna put relevant experience. Um, so those are like little loopholes to make you seem more impressive. Um, I, I love when someone brings me their resume, it sucks. And I tell them that pretty much, I tell them, hey, your resume sucks. And this is what it's going to look like. And then later they're like, my resume, I feel proud of me now. <laughs> it's like, I see my resume and I'm impressed. Um, so that's, that's what I want you to get to. Um, include a link to LinkedIn, um, list hard skills like software. That's good. Um, let's see, uh, keep it simple. Yeah, the, you don't want to make it complicated. I, there's some people that really like wordiness and like all these fancy words. Don't use that. Uh, just keep it simple. Make it easy for me. I'm talking to hundreds of people um, during the whole conferences and things. And like, I try not to recruit anymore. So like the recruiters are doing that. Um, so they're talking to all these people. So make it easy for them. Make it simple for them to just be like, okay, this person's great. Let me, let, let, let me do this. Um, don't have more than three pages. I should have more than two pages. I don't know if I, I, I meant here have more than two pages, which is including three. Don't have three pages. Um, don't do executive or summary or object if no one looks at it. Um, summarize your responsibilities. Um, okay, whatever. Um, summarize your responsibilities. Oh yeah, so I, I was like, what do I mean? Like, don't do that. Oh yeah, so this is a don't. Don't summarize your responsibility. Tell you about it. Don't add pictures, age, gender, street address. Um, that's just taking up space and no one cares. Um, they shouldn't be looking at your age and gender. I actually, something that they recommend to me recently is because I keep on trying to get like, management role. So they're like, hey, just take off the year you graduated. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, so they can't know like what age I am because they're like, oh, he's young. He, um, Cause there's age bias, right? And it's like, it's unconscious bias. Um, so make sure you don't give that to yourself. Um, uh, so let's see, um, add orgs you're a member of, but didn't lead anything. Yeah. So don't be adding orgs. Like don't be adding AIAA if you didn't do anything um, because you're taking up space. And they might ask you, and then you're just like, oh, yeah, I was a member. Like, okay, that's not cool. Um, what I tell people is go get involved with AIAA. Don't be the president. You don't have to do that. Um, but go lead a effort. As soon as you lead a effort, you can you have leadership skills. You can say, hey, I led. It doesn't matter if it was another person or two people. You're a lead. So I led this effort. So go add in leadership skills. That's what I mean about there. Not just don't add an organization. Is don't add that you were just a member. Add that you had some leadership skills by doing some little leadership thing um don't have less than three or more than five we talked about that don't include references um yeah, it's just a waste of time um don't include high school items 
Um, this is okay only if you're like a freshman in college and you're trying to get an internship. I wouldn't include high school items. Um, get over it. People tell me to not include college stuff anymore on mine, but I still include some of the high ones. Um, don't list people skills, soft skills. Don't list that. Uh, let's see. Um, don't make stuff wordy or sound try to sound too fancy. And don't add a list of classes. Like if you're a mechanical engineer and you add in there heat and mass transfer, it's like, sure, Bob, but everyone else also took that class. So don't add in your classes uh, unless it's like some specific elective that you took that's specific to that job, then I would add that in. But if it's just a normal class that everyone else has, um, don't add it. Um, okay, cool. So before I start reviewing people's resumes real time, any general questions? What's the best way to send the resume in? Um, if it's a job application, job app, I, I don't have an answer to I mean that. I you right now, currently. Okay, so if, oh, oh, okay, so to get it reviewed, I would say LinkedIn, since I have four on LinkedIn already, that's probably the best bet that I would look at first. Uh, you can just add it as a message. Uh, let's see, where can I send my resume? Oh, sorry about that. Hi, mine is up to my LinkedIn so I can review your resume. Okay, sorry about that, Francisco. Okay, cool. So let's go into reviewing some resumes. Bloop. Bloop. I don't know my LinkedIn profile one is probably on Safari. Okay. Now let's go to whoever sent it to me first. So whoever sent it to me first should be at the bottom of this. Do, do, do. Okay. So Andrew, thank you for sending your resume. I am going to be a little harsh just because of time. I and mean, I'm not trying to be mean. Uh, I, full disclosure, if you send me your resume, sorry, but I tend to be not that nice of a person when it comes to a business, but I'm doing it for your own good. Um, okay, so Andrew, um, and then let's try to keep this in between us, right? Especially because like people's emails and phone numbers on stuff. So don't be taking screenshots, that's weird. Um, okay, so uh like i can see a formatting issue right here there's two dots you want to make sure that you show that you're i've seen people that put like de detail oriented and like and i see like formatting issues so like i can see that formatting issues it's not a big deal i don't think like if you have everything else that i care about i wouldn't care about it but just don't add that in there okay um bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering um okay i would add a gpa into this one into this line like down here um okay so let's see, Andrew, um, projects, uh, okay, let's see. So I'm assuming you want a mechanical engineering job in aerospace since you're here. Um, I would say, um, let me see, I would add in, okay, that's when you did that project. Okay, so built a personal computer familiarity with using different types of hands and tools like screwdrivers and pliers. Um, extensive knowledge, like you need to add powerful words in here. Um, so your first word needs to be more powerful. So I'm more interested in it. Um, you need to add in numbers. So it's more exciting to read, add in like anything you optimized. Uh, hey, I improved this part of the project by 10%. That's impressive. Um, so add in powerful words and add in numbers. We want to see numbers in here. Um, delivery service is 100%. Okay, I, I like the number here. I, I would word that a little bit differently. Um, but okay, more powerful words, um, provided is not that powerful. Um, time management deliveries to me, yeah, you need to add in powerful start words. Um, let's see, overall, your resume, by, by the way, your resume, I like it a lot. It's a good format, I mean, it's easy to read, it, it's really good. I, I like it a lot. Um, I would just, in your case, I would do like the first three letters of the of the months. I think you're taking up too much space, and it's just like I, I, I you don't need it, so I would do like SEP 2020. Um, yeah, SCP 2020. I guess this one's fall and spring. So maybe just add the months that you did that project. Um, work experience, that's pretty good work experience. I like that it's, uh, okay. And I like that you have extracurriculars. So you have everything that I'm looking for. Um, let's see, if, if I was looking for, 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 let's see, you're graduating May 25. So if I'm looking for an intern, and you're really out there still. So you're doing a great job and, and you're at this session. So you're already killing that great job, Andrew. Uh, people like you get the, the dream jobs. Um, and if you didn't do all this when you're when you're like a freshman or a sophomore like Andrew, it's still okay. Um, okay, so 
yeah, I got a great resume so far. I would do, yeah, the changes to, to reduce the three letters. I would make sure that, that it's all like to the right here or like they all start at the same area. So like line these up. That's what I'm trying to say. Go line all this up so it looks a little bit cleaner. Um, I like the format. Um, add in more value, add in more impressive starting words. Um, and yeah, you have everything I'm looking for, extracurriculars. The only thing you're missing, and, and it's not like formatting of your resume, is add in some, some, if you're trying to get into the aerospace field, add in some projects related to aerospace. Um, then you would be like really good. And, and that's what I would do. Okay, but, but great resume, Andrew. Um, it was a little bit of advice, so, but I also want to go look at other people's. Um, a great resume so far. I actually liked it a lot. And then this is helping everyone else too. Um, okay, so people look at resumes like an E. So I look at this top thing. I look at this stuff on the side. I look at down here and people look at it as an E. Um, which is really interesting. They, they did like a mapping of what people look at. Um, so that being said, is you're using all your prime real estate to add in stuff that, that's not that important. Um, so relevant courses, right? Um, let's see, your electrical engineer, I'm assuming, yeah. So I, I, I know your electrical engineer just by the courses you're taking. Everyone else takes these courses. So just delete them if they're, if they're the same courses that everyone else took um, because you're wasting too much space doing that. Um, key skills, uh, let's see. Bilingual Spanish, that's good. Project management. Um, everyone can say their project management skills. Um, go add in instead experience showing that you have project management and take it out of here. Um, CC++, that's good. Um, let's see. Computer skills. You know, Office is so common nowadays that you might take it off. You don't have space later. Um, but that one, excellent interpersonal. This is the type of stuff that I would take out. Um, just because like anyone can say that or anyone can say they have customer skills or problem solving instead add in here what justifies that okay so pretty much I would kind of delete almost this whole format and do more of the format that we've shown everyone else um, profile analytical energetic and detail oriented master's degree grad I'm not going to read any of that if I'm looking at it um, so I would just either keep that to one sentence or delete it completely um, okay, so now we're getting, so yeah, so I literally looked at all your resume and I didn't see anything that was interesting for me because I haven't even looked at your, 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 your skills. And now that I look at it, look at that, you're aerospace project engineering manager. I didn't even know that. I thought you were a student um, just because I'm, I'm seeing like all these key skills and these relevant courses. Like, I'm like, why is relevant courses even here if he's a professional? So my first uh, uh, idea of you was that you were a student because you had relevant courses. So take that out. Um, and then, especially because you have your education on top too. I would add your professional experience first, education after that, because that's this is, this is the most important thing you have in your resume. And it's literally, the most important thing you have, you're hiding it from me. Um, so I would put that like right after your name. Um, so using the format that we kind of showed on the other thing. And then it's also my article that you can use. Um, okay, so kind of the same as the other one, add in numbers, add in the value that you did. Both of you have like job descriptions um, of what you did or like job summaries, add in the value that you add. I'm gonna add in more numbers in there too. Um, construction, supplying, assembling. Okay, so assembling is, is okay, That's I like that one. Um, supplying electrical energy. Um, let me give you an example of what here. So, Bachelor of Science in Physics. Oh, see, I'm not even looking at your, your job description. Yeah, it's just the whole formatting of, the, of, of this it makes it confusing for me. Um, so yeah, so go change it completely. And the most important thing you have in here, you added like a job description. Um, so you wanna go add in the value that you add. Coordinate high voltage simulations. Okay, um, I would do some like simulated high voltage analysis or something or analyze high voltage whatever you did there um, to reduce um, by 20% this and this. I would add what the value that you actually added. Um, design simulations for electrical harness. Um, simulated electrical harnesses by doing this and this with this software, I would add in the software in there um, and adding the values. Um, so that's how I would do it. And like, you wanna reduce this to like five bullet points. Um, so more powerful words. And then I wouldn't do these column things. Hopefully that helps Emmanuel. That help Emmanuel? I can't hear you see if you're talking. Um, okay, let's see. Oh no, that's me. Yeah, Beat me up too bad. 
Yeah, no, no, I, I, I have good intentions here, right? I'm literally looking at the smallest details um, just to make sure, ooh, and we're over time. Um, so let, I'll go quick with this one. Um, okay, so summary of qualifications. I, I have six seconds to look at your resume. It's two pages and like, I was like, oh my God, really do I have to look at this? Um, so what I would do if I had your resume, I would skip everything you have on here and I would go to professional experience, full-time student. Okay, still not impressing me. I, I know that based off your education and when you're graduating. Um, survey crew leader, okay, conducted survey and activities, guidance on the, okay. So, so here's the, 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 the important stuff. So you're hiding the important stuff literally in the second page. Um, and you have good, you have good experience. Manage the crew, look at that. You have, you have really good experience, but you're hiding it all the way in the second page because you're adding com competencies. And I don't know why people just keep on adding this. People be like, oh, it's an executive resume or something. No, just, just, just move all that out. Um, no one has time to look at that, especially if you're using the format of getting referrals and going into things. Um, okay. Yeah, adding more numbers of the things you did. Um, you, you, do, you are using some powerful keywords, so I like that, but I, I would make sure that every, every, every start is a powerful keyword. Um, cool. Okay. All right, so we are over time. Um, that went by much faster than I thought it was. Um, but before we go, let's get a picture. Let's get, let's get a picture that I'm going to add on my LinkedIn um, literally right after this session. Alexa, I'm talking to you. All right, so if you want to get a picture, you want to be part of the picture, um, go off, turn your camera on. Um, and we have to look happy, right? We have to look like, hey, this session was exciting. It was awesome. There we go, just like that. Um, because we want other people to join the next one. And hopefully you learned, hopefully you, you've had, you enjoyed this session. Um, I'll give you guys a couple more seconds to take on whoever wants to do a picture. Um, awesome, awesome. Okay, cool, cool. So thanks for taking your picture on Douglas, Elijah, Linda, Brent. Oh, I'm just going to have this Texas. shitty grin until I get hired. Oh, that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I, lo I love the smile. That's good. Alejandro. Okay, I think that's everyone that's turning their camera on. Everybody else, your name will be on it. So cool. All right. Uh, let's do one, two, three. Smile. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Ellen, thank you for having us. AIAA, thank you for sponsoring this session. Hopefully, you all learned. Our next one is, I don't remember when it is, but Ellen. January. Uh, it's in January. It's in January, and, January. and then in March. And uh, March. Arnold. Arnold has the dates posted on his um, on his LinkedIn page, and I have it on the AIAA Rack and Read. So you can get it at any one of those places. Come join us in January after the holidays. Yep, and then go sign up for AIAA. Thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arnold. Thank you, Arnold.